Hi, Little Spark from Trouble With Purpose and welcome to my story. Well, it's not my story, it's a story of inspiration, of how the impossible is possible and how travelling with purpose can actually have a story, not only for you but for others. I'll commence this story by letting you know that the Camino de Santiago really inspired me when I read a book by Paolo Coelho called The Pilgrimage. And that inspired me to the point where I thought, one day I am going to walk the Camino de Santiago. I didn't know how. And I didn't really like the idea of putting a pack on my back and trying to find accommodation. And then I read um, Shirley MacLaine, I Watched the Way. And then about three years ago, I was bedridden with shingles. It wasn't very comfortable, but here I was in bed and I took the opportunity to read. And one of the books that I read was by Sonia Coquette called Walking Home. And she talked about how she got up one day and she decided that the Camino de Santiago was something that she really wanted to do. And she organised um, with this company to go to um, the Camino where they organised for her backpack or her luggage to go from place to place and the accommodation was booked along the way. And I thought to myself, now that is how I am going to do the Camino de Santiago. So I came home, um, came home, I went to work and I decided that I would do a bit of research. Not very well, but I thought, you know what, I'm just going to take this opportunity while it's fresh in my mind and where I got a bit excited to go and find out if there was a company in Australia that actually did what Sonia Coquette's company did. And lo and behold, I did find a company that actually booked the Camino, booked your accommodation and transferred your luggage from point to point. So all that you had to do is get up in the morning, put on your trek gear, put on your boots, walking sticks in hand, have your breakfast and off you go and walk. And you can walk between 20 to 30 odd kilometres. So with that, I um, decided that I was going to put together a group and we were going to walk the Camino de Santiago. I was um, toying with the idea of doing the whole lot and then talking to my husband. He was saying, Nella, you're not going to do the whole lot. So I thought, okay. And he was thinking at the time of joining me. And I thought, okay, how can I get my way here? So I compromised. I said to him, I said, so what about if we walk 300 kilometres from Lyon to Santiago? He said, yeah, that sounds good. So off I went and organised it. Ended up with having um, eight people on my group. John, unfortunately, uh, wasn't able to come. And um, off we trek. Now, to say that it was easy, I would be lying. To say that it was difficult, I would be telling the truth. It stretched me physically, it stretched me mentally, it stretched me emotionally and spiritually. Four days in, um, unfortunately, I received a phone call to say that my brother had passed away. So not only did I have the burden of walking the Camino de Santiago, I also had the burden of knowing that my brother had passed away. That weighed very heavily on my heart and my body. So you can just imagine knowing that you're so far away and there's nothing you can do and my little brother was left over here to do all the arranging etc etc but that's another story so one of the hardest days of the walk was walking into Porto Marin I was walking down this really bad actually I made the wrong decision but the right decision there was an old route into Porto Marin or there was an actual route that was more on the road. For whatever reason, I didn't see that there was a difference. And I got to a point where it was fairly steep, very rocky, and I just froze. I just stood on this rock and I just went, I can't walk anymore. I just, I just can't put one more foot in front of the other. And I don't know where they came from, but they say the Camino always comes to your aid. And this beautiful young man came up to me and he goes, are you okay? And I go, oh, not really. He says, come on, I'll, I'll walk you. 
um, through this part. So he walked me through this really difficult rocky patch and off, off he went when he thought he saw that I was okay. And then I got to another really bad patch. And again, I froze, tears running down my face and I'm going, I just can't do this, I'm stuck. I was literally frozen. And out of nowhere, these three beautiful Spanish hefty men turned up and um, they could see that I was stuck and, and they said, you're okay? And I said, yes. And then I went, no, I'm not okay. And I started to cry. Next thing, they grabbed my hand, took my, my backpack and um, they saw me to the end. Went to my room that night and um, or that late afternoon and just crashed on my bed, tears and etc. So I'm a leader of a group and I'm not supposed to be like this, but I was. So we go into the town of Porto Marin and for whatever reason, this night was just a shambles. Everyone was everywhere. Nobody really knew where they wanted to eat. Some wanted Italian, some wanted this, some wanted the other. And I just went, you know what, I can't do this anymore. So I just took off on my own and I walked past this couple that were just sitting um, in this cafe and they were having Italian and that's exactly what I felt like. And I, um, I don't know what made me talk to them, but I sat and I went up to them and I said, oh, that looks delicious. And they said, yes, it's really nice. And where are you from? They were from Perth. Oh, I'm from West Australia too. I come from Melbourne. Oh, really? I have family in Mount Barker. Mount Barker is like 30 minutes away from Albany. So there was a bit of a yuck, 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 talking, talking, talking. And um, the next thing, they just look at me and they said, you're having a really hard time, aren't you? And I said, yes, I'm not really enjoying this today, especially today. And they just said to me, said, it's okay. And I asked them hey, no, how many times they'd done the Camino and this was their second time. And I looked at them and I go, what? You put yourself through this twice, not just once, but twice. And I said, I don't know whether I'll ever do this again. And they said, yes, you will. And you'll be back with your husband. And I'm just looking at them going, you are crazy. There's no way in a million years that I am coming back here to go through all this. Long story short, I finished um, the trip absolutely determined that there was no way that I was going to go back on the Camino, let alone take another group away. I come back to work and I'm feeling this way and I call her my Camino angel. There's a client of um, mine that came in virtually as soon as I got back, says, Mila, what are you doing the next Camino? And I'm going, ha, ha, ha. Oh. I've just got back, Sandra, sorry, um, I haven't really thought about it. Okay, next week she comes in again. Um, you still haven't thought about it, Sandra? Next week she comes again. She came in every week for six weeks until I just got the message. I went, okay, the universe, you're sending me a message, you're sending me this Camino angel for me and for a purpose. So you know what, I accept, I have to go back on the Camino. So I put together another Camino, and this time we were starting from saint jean de port which is on the Pyrenees, the French side of the Pyrenees, walking over the Pyrenees to Lyon, where I started the previous year. Within no time, I had 12 people in my group. One of the people, and this is where the beautiful story that Travelling With Purpose starts. So one of the um, people that joined us was Cheryl. Now Cheryl, in 29th of September in 2014, lost her son to a fatal white pointer shark attack. Devastation. They have two children, Jay being the son and Ebony being the daughter. He was 17 years of age. He would have been, he died in the December, he would have been 18 in the March. She wanted to come with me the previous year, but because the daughter was turning 18, decided that she wouldn't come in um, that year, but she definitely wanted to join me in 2017, September, this year just gone. I said, awesome, that would be just fantastic. She said, Nella, I need this for me. I need this just to have, get away and just really reflect on, on everything. And I said, I can understand that, my love. So anyway, she signed up. One day, well, about a few weeks later, she brings me up and she says, Nella, um, guess what? And I said, what, sweetheart? She said, Mark wants to join me. Now, Mark is her husband. 
And I said, uh, and she said to me, said, I don't want him to join me. And I go, sweetheart, oh my God, I can't, I don't know what to say to you, but he's lost his son. You can't tell him he can't come because then you'll feel like he's lost you as well. You've got to let him make the decision whether he comes or whether he doesn't come. She took my advice and next thing Mark comes in. So if you can just imagine this, he's six foot four, six foot five, 144 kilos, big cuddly bear, comes storming into the office, or not storming, but comes walking into the office, you know, all brazen, and he goes, what's this Camino crap all about? I go, oh. Um, well, Mark, it's a pilgrimage. It's a walk in north of Spain um, where people go to walk. And, um, and for me, especially from last year, it was a spiritual journey. What happens if I don't get anything out of it? I went, Mark, you can get whatever it is that you need to get out of this, whatever it is. Mm. So he goes leaves the office and they're on their way to see his mother that live in um, just south of Perth in a place called Mandra. And um, he comes back or they ring me on the way back and said, yep, I'm coming. And I said, okay, so I signed up Mark. A few weeks or a few days later, he comes storming in again. He goes, what am I paying for? I'm walking and I'm paying all this money. And I go, oh God, Mark, I don't know what to say to you. You're paying for your accommodation, my love. You're paying for your food. You're paying for your luggage to be being transported. So you're just paying for the experience. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know I'm not walking. I go, Mark, you can do whatever it is that you need to do, sweet. But you're doing 100... Well, Cheryl's booked to walk 170 kilometres. So if you walk 170 kilometres or you don't walk 170 kilometres, you're joining us. So now I'll meet you in the bar each, in each town. I said, okay, sweet. That's what you want to do, then that's what you want to do. So take the story a little bit forward and we meet in Paris. He's walked, trained for two kilometres just before he came away. We get to um, St. Jean Peter Port. He's dressed in shorts and a singlet and just normal walking shoes runners as we call them in Australia and I'm going okay this is going to be really interesting so the first day we decided that we'd walk to Orison which is eight kilometers but it's in the Pyrenees so you can just imagine it's straight up so here's Mark he's walking complaining the whole time he gets to Orison creates a bit of a scene and um, he's not walking another day I'm going okay I'm walking another day Anyway, we catch a taxi back to, or taxi bus back to um, St. Jean Peter Port, and, um, and then we were going to take the taxi back to, to uh, Orison the next day and walk the final 20 kilometres. Because in one hit it would have been 28 kilometres. For the first day, it was just going to be too much for everybody. So, the long story short, the next day, Mark does walk the next 20 kilometres, complaining and not happy at all. His wife is nowhere to be seen. She's gone off walking with somebody else and Mark is walking on his own. You could see and you could feel that their relationship was really, really, really strained. Cheryl, I'm sure if she'd come on her own, was definitely making a decision to leave her husband. Mark had no idea what the hell was going on. So the following day, which was the day that we were going to, um, no, we arrived in Rosavales. We arrived in Rosavales. Cheryl was there already and um, we were walking with Mark. He arrived and Cheryl was very frustrated. She couldn't get into a room. So basically Cheryl and Mark had a bit of a blue. Cheryl sitting down at the bottom and John, my husband, who was with me, drove me absolutely crazy that day. So here's Cheryl and I complaining bitterly about our husbands and how we were better off without them. Blah-de-blah-de-blah-de-blah. And that, that evening in um, 
when we were having our meal, Shul was one side of the um, table and Mark was way over the other side of the table. At the end of the meal, everybody left and the three of us, Mark, John and myself were left and we had a really lovely conversation and Mark just spilled his heart. There was tears from all of us um, as he was trying to make sense of what was going on and why Cheryl was ignoring him and why Cheryl was you know, not happy about him being there, etc, etc, etc. So the next day we decided that I would walk with Cheryl and Sandra, my Camino Angel, and John would walk with Mark. So off we go and the three girls, we were just had a lovely time and one stage there she went because what we were doing in the morning is um, making up a little roll um, with some fruit and that would be our lunch. And as we were starting to walk um, a little way down the track, Cheryl goes, oh no, Mark's got my lunch. And we all just said, look, doesn't matter. We've all got a little bit of something so we'll sit down when the time's right and share our food. And we found this beautiful table in um, the woods it was autumn, so the autumn leaves were falling. It was just absolutely a beautiful scene and we were just talking. And at one stage there, Cheryl was getting a little bit narky about Mark and I just called her, not a nice name, but, um, and she said, turned around to me and she goes, I've never been called that before. And I said, look, you're being really hard. I said, you're both suffering. You both had the loss of a beautiful boy. And I said, you're both in pain so much pain that you don't know how to share your pain with each other. So we left it at that. And as we were walking down the hill, there was this little um, bar and there was Mark all on his own and just looked up at um, Cheryl so lovingly and she goes, Cheryl, I waited here because I've got your lunch. Oh, my heart melted. And Cheryl just stood there looking at him and I sort of hit her and I said, Cheryl, so thank you. And she goes, thank you, Mark. And then I walked into the bar with her and I said, was that too hard to say thank you? And she's going, rrr, 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 rrr. So that was day three. He said, I can't walk anymore. I'm in so much pain. I've had enough. I'm catching a taxi. So we're in this village, not a soul inside. So there's no way that we were going to be able to catch a taxi. We started climbing up in this little path and... Mark just sat down, he was in agony, his legs weren't working, he was sore, but again, Sandra, our little Camino Angel, had some Nurofen, some painkillers, and there's also, they had some uh, cream, well, I don't know, some, something to ease the muscle pain. So here's Cheryl, who's not wanting to have anything to do with her husband, basically ignored him for two days. She took his backpack, she gave him her walking sticks, she rubbed the cream on his legs, he took his um, painkillers or anti-inflammatories and started walking. That man, 144 kilo boy, with no training, with just shorts and a singlet, walked the full distance of 170 kilometres. The determination that he showed, a totally an inspiring young man. And to see them as we started walking into Logroño at the end of the 170 kilometres, hand in hand, brought such a joy to my heart and tears to my eyes. One stage there, there was beautiful roses, they're called the Rose of St James all along the boulevard and Mark stopped and was trying to um, cut one of the roses and I thought oh my god that is so beautiful he's going to give Cheryl a rose but they stopped both of them stopped turned around and as I walked towards him he gave me the rose the most beautiful precious moment that I could ever imagine that Camino had so many stories, had so many joys, had tears, it had laughter, had fun, not so much fun. But the thing that I'll always hold in my heart and will always, always remember is that these two people with so much pain in their hearts could come together and walk hand in hand at the end of a 170 kilometre journey being able to talk and being able to share their, their pain and realise that they weren't alone. 
So traveling with purpose creates incredible stories, creates incredible inspiration and creates so much power to move forward and making the possible impossible. So they go off and have a few more, oh, I think more 10 days more together in San Sebastian, Barcelona and Madrid. And they were just the two of them enjoying each other's company probably for the first time for a long time. Come back to Australia, John, myself and six others, we continued and walked 500 kilometres to Lyon. Incredible journey, but that's another story because this is a story about two wounded people that through walking and talking and sharing, coming together. So I come back to Australia after this incredible walk and the miracles continued. I was um, in Perth and I got a phone call from one of my girls in the office saying, oh, Cheryl's um, dad and sister have just come in and they want to go away. And I went, oh, that's beautiful, that's awesome. So the next day, and the, that was Friday, and the, the Monday, um, the sister comes in and um, they meet their father every uh, Friday. And the father said to Cheryl and Sue, I want to take you girls away. Bearing in mind that this man is an 84 year old man who had lost his wife, had lost two grandsons and lost his son all in the space of a few years. All he had left was his two daughters. He wanted to share something special with his two daughters. So the month of December, I spent with these two, three incredible people planning an incredible journey to South America, doing all the things that Bill had dreamt of doing. And he knew in his heart that he had to share his money, his time, his life with his two girls. They've come back recently and the wounds that have been healed because of this time together has been nothing short of a total miracle. And it just goes on and on and on. I could go on about what's happened in my life, but it's not about that. It's about making the impossible possible and how when you put yourself in a situation where you really have to face yourself and you have to face your demons, how the healing is so, so powerful, not only for yourself but for others and you become an inspiration for me. The number of people that I have seen in recent times that all know Cheryl and Mark are just in awe of what they've achieved, what they've accomplished, and where they've come to from that dark, dark place that they were in. Bill, Cheryl's father, thanked me profusely one day. He said, I was so worried about my girl. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And with that, I'll leave you to say thank you for giving me this opportunity to share this incredible story. Thank you for listening and thank you for just being. Go and do what your heart wants to do and know that your pain is not just your pain. To share your pain, you can heal not only yourself but heal others. So this is now, Nala, this is Nilla Sparks saying bye for now. Thank you once again. And remember, traveling with, pur with purpose, this is where the story begins. <laughs>